Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Land Information and asks how many hectares of land does the government own in the Mackenzie country and has the government given consent for any of this land to be converted to irrigated dairy farming? The Honourable Morris Williamson. The Mackenzie district is 744,000 hectares of which approximately 323,000 hectares is in Crown pastoral leases. It is not the government but the local authority acting under the Resource Management, Resource Management Act that consents to a land use change. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you Mr Speaker. Does he consider that converting the Crown's high country land to irrigated dairy farming, does he consider that to be an activity that would affect or disturb the soil? The Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, I'm not going to uh, offer a view on that. I do know that the independent, the statutory independent Commissioner of Crown Land makes the decision on any disturbance to the soil, not the Minister. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. In light of the fact that converting to irrigated dairy farming is hard to see as anything other than disturbing the soil, is it not the case that a leasee of Crown pastoral land must not undertake any activity affecting or disturbing the soil without the express consent from the Commissioner of Crown Land, and has that consent been applied for? The Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, the member is right. There are two uh, instances where the consent is required. One is soil disturbance and one is where there is changes to the stocking of that land that is maybe moving from sheep to dairy or whatever. In both cases, those applications are made to the Commissioner for Crown Lands. I am aware of only one application for soil disturbance consent being made, and that is for a pipeline which passes over three successive pastoral leases. Dr Russell Mr. Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Has he discussed with the Commissioner the fact that, in spite of around 5,000 hectares of Crown land currently being before the Regional Council to be converted and irrigated, that none of the pastoral land leasees have asked permission from the Commissioner uh, to actually irrigate this land in the, in the Mackenzie country? The Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, my understanding of it is that because the Commissioner of Crown Lands is a statutory independent authority, I would be acting ultra vires if I was to discuss such a matter with him. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is it not the case that the Commissioner of Crown Land must take into account the objectives of ecological sustainability and protecting significant inherent values in the land when deciding whether the land should be allowed to be converted, that is, the public's land, whether it's allowed to be converted to intensive dairying? The Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, I understand the conditions that the Commissioner for Crown Lands must take into account are very, very well laid out in the Crown Pastoral Land Act of 1998, of which some of the conditions the member referred to are part of. Dr Sorry. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister believe that in losing 5,000 hectares of dry tussock country, uh, a native ecosystem which is habitat for many species of endangered birds and plants, such as the black stilt, in losing 5,000 hectares of native tussock country, that we will be losing ecological values? Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, again, I ask the member to be very careful about asking for my opinion. I am very, very careful not to act ultra vires on such matters. If it's a resource consent for land use, it should go through the proper Resource Management Act consent to the local authority. And if it's either a soil disturbance or a change to stocking rate, it should be an application made to the Commissioner of Crown Lands. I can get myself into a lot of trouble if I started making, expressing in this House opinions for things for which I'm not allowed to. Dr Russell Norman. Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What steps will he take to ensure that the public, who owns approximately 40 per cent of the land that's affected by these proposals in the Mackenzie country, will have a right to decide what happens on that land? And will he support any changes to the legislation to enable the government representing the people of New Zealand to have a say over what happens on their land? 
Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, I am very sure the public, especially the members of the public in this part of uh, the Mackenzie District, are very, very well aware of the law, how it operates, and, and I am sure lots of those people will make their views well known when any either resource consent or soil disturbance or stocking change applications are ever lodged. Point of order. Uh, point of order, Dr Russell. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question wasn't about the people of the Mackenzie. My question was about the government's position, whether it would support legislative change to enable the people of New Zealand to have a say over these land use changes. The Minister talked about the people of the Mackenzie, which is fine, um, but I, I, my question was specifically about the government of New Zealand. I, I, I have to confess I did not uh, pick up that part of the member's question, but I'll take his word for it and, uh, and therefore invite him just to repeat that part of the, the, repeat his question, because I did not hear that part. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Minister support a legislative change to enable the public of New Zealand via their government to have a direct say over the future of this 10,000 hectares, which they consider to be extremely valuable? Uh, Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, one of the things I've learnt in this House over many years is I never say I'll support anything until I've seen the detail, the specifics, and know the exact proposal rather than something that Russell Norman might be proposing by way of legislative change just on the minute on the hoof. Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Order, I've called the member's colleague, Ian Lees Galloway. Given that uses such as intensive uh, dairy farming now appear possible in the fragile Mackenzie Basin, will the Minister consider placing caveats on environmentally significant land released into private ownership under tenure review to prevent these activities? Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, the process of tenure review is going to take a long time, probably two to three years on the ones that are right down the pipe already and five to seven years on some of the ones that are only just having applications made. It is during that very long, long process there will be a huge amount of consideration given to the issue. Those factors will certainly be taken into account. Question number eight, the Honourable Marianne Street. 